Hello everyone, I'm David Bauerf, Executive Director of the Association of Indiana Counties. Thanks for watching this video. Uh, today we have uh, Chris Johnston. He's the Director of Management and Budget for the state of Indiana. And he's originally from Crown Point. He previously led OMB's Division of Government Efficiency during the administration of Governor Mitch Daniels and was named his Deputy Chief of Staff. He then joined the finance world working with KSM Consulting before returning to state government where he now serves as Director of the state's Office of Management and Budget, an agency that oversees 11 state agencies, many of which county officials deal with on a daily basis, uh, including in that is Department of Revenue, State Board of Accounts, State Budget Agency, DLGF, um, Indiana Off the uh, Board of Tax Review, and also the Indiana Finance Authority is under their domain. And uh, I just want to thank Chris. He was very instrumental in helping set up the program at IFA that allowed uh, $300 million to flow uh, in, uh, to city, towns, and counties from the federal government on the CARES Act fund. So we appreciate that, and uh, I hope that turned out, uh, I know it was a lot of work for IFA and for your office, but uh, I hope everything turned out well on that. Well, I, I think uh, we're very pleased with, with how it, uh, uh, how it uh, rolled out. The, I know it, was, uh, it took a while to, to get started, but come this fall, uh, I think uh, everything picked up, and uh, uh, we're doing a sort of a, a final settlement on that, on that program, uh, as uh, I think your members know that there was a, a, a deadline, original deadline with the CARES Act or the Coronavirus Relief Fund of December 30th. Uh, most of that money went out. There's just only a, a little bit of that left. So we're doing a reconciliation of that. And, uh, and uh, we might have a little bit more money uh, to, uh, to allocate, but uh, we're, we're going to uh, take a look at that and see what to do next. And the federal government was continuing to change the rules on how that money could be spent. And you all had to adopt and we had to adopt. So there were a lot of phone calls, a lot of right. uh, webinars about the training for that, but a lot of work on your all's part to help county government. So we really appreciate that. You bet. It was our pleasure. Yeah. Hey, I wanted to touch base uh, about the budget next week. Uh, I know the House is going to take up the governor's proposed budget. And, um, you know, with the pandemic, certainly revenue is not coming in quite as anticipated, probably. Uh, and what is that? What has been the difference between early projections um, and then when the pandemic hit in March, April? I think we were all prepared for the worst. Right. It doesn't seem like things were quite as bad as we feared. So how is revenue coming in? No. Uh, it, in fact, it, it's been a pleasant surprise over the last uh, several months. In fact, when we presented the governor's budget uh, to the budget committee uh, last week, uh, we were able to report on many, many positive features. You're exactly right, David, is that when the pandemic first started, in uh, March and April, uh, we looked at uh, some uh, preliminary uh, revenue forecasts. Uh, we looked at the last recession in 2009, yeah. and uh, those those were giving indications. In fact, in 2009, I think it was over two billion dollars that we missed the revenue forecast over a couple year period. And some of those revenue forecasts that were coming out uh, back in the spring. Uh, had a similar dollar amount, and some of scenarios even had it higher that we would miss forecasts uh, even more. I remember uh, uh, one revenue f uh, or economic forecasting firm thought that state governments wouldn't return to 2019 revenue levels until 2024. But things have, uh, I think, with the federal uh, assistance package that came out, um, uh, it really helped support uh, our, our state budget. Yeah. We've been tracking uh, income tax withholdings uh, by county for each quarter. And again, I've been pleasantly surprised. Next week, uh, we're gonna re release the data we've collected uh, from the help of the Department of Revenue for fourth quarter. But really withholdings uh, held out pretty well through the, whole, through the whole calendar year. What revenue source do you think uh, suffered the most because of the pandemic? Well, uh, as, as probably most of the members know that uh, our big revenue streams are sales tax, individual income tax, corporate income tax, and then gaming tax also. And so uh, because of the federal assistance, um, people still spent that money when they, when they got it this spring. And so uh, if you look at some of the charts, it shows that uh, consumer spending went down immediately uh, in March and April, but then bounced back significantly when that assistance uh, came out. So in Indiana, uh, we have a 7% you know, uh, sales tax rate. And when people did not, well, the unfortunate thing is, is we couldn't go out to uh, our restaurants, we couldn't go to ball games. A lot of service uh, uh, services 
uh, our citizens didn't have the opportunity to spend money on that. But they did decide to spend money on a lot of goods, and that's what we tax. And so sales tax really hung in there. Uh, I think even though the withholding uh, is, is doing well and income tax uh, and estimated taxes are hanging in there, uh, that's the one thing that we're watching. And so if you look at the comparison of the last revenue forecast in December of 2019 to the one that was just uh, published in December of 2020, that is forecasting a difference in forecasted revenue of about $950 million. And so some of that is, is still sales tax, but the big component is individual income and, uh, and, and corporate income tax. Um, the gaming revenue, obviously, uh, earlier in 2020, uh, the casinos were closed. And so you missed two, if not three months worth of, of revenue related uh, to that. So overall, if we were expecting to miss by over $2 billion, and this revenue forecast came back still a sizable number at $950 million, um, we, uh, I think we're in good shape with some of the actions that the governor uh, took with the state agencies as far as cutting back on spending and, and kept us in a, a pretty good position. And something else that's fortunate for Indiana, that foresight to really create what I call the remote sales tax collection, because as you mentioned, a lot of stores were closed down in Indiana, but people continued to buy through various <laughs> online stores. So that really helped us out, I think. A absolutely. So the remote sales tax and then the other feature the marketplace facilitator. So the sales that uh, come through in, in eBay or a uh, uh, Amazon, those uh, those uh, particular services, able to collect uh, sales tax on that. And so, as I mentioned, people were still buying things. It just wasn't particularly uh, necessarily in the uh, the retail outlets. Uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, with the vaccine and all of that, we'll return to those normal uh, buying patterns. Yeah. And with the state's COVID relief funds, I know that you have some flexibility with that, but I've seen some stories where maybe you're going to spend some of that to help rebuild the unemployment trust fund. Is that definitive or still under consideration? Well, we, in fact, we've actually did make okay. a, a contribution to the unemployment insurance trust fund. Okay. And so uh, overall, uh, since the pandemic started, I think uh, uh, workforce development told me uh, we've uh, distributed over $6 billion. Now, $5 billion of that Six billion is from the federal government, but over a billion dollars, about a billion four, was from uh, payments into the fund over the years from our employers in the state of Indiana. Um, those payments went out, and then this fall, though the the uh, the the balances in the fund were depleted, and we had to start borrowing money from the federal government. That happened in the last recession, uh, in a significant way. I think the state borrowed over two billion dollars. Um, and just paid it back, I think, in 20, maybe around 2015. Uh, we wanted to relieve the pressure on, that, on the UI trust fund of that. And so we deposited $400 million from the relief fund into uh, the UI trust fund to uh, pay off any borrowings that had occurred through December 30th. But then we also projected into the future of what the potential borrowings might be through this spring and tried to make a down payment on that as well. So I'm assuming that really helped the business community, small businesses specifically by making that contribution and put to less pressure to raise the unemployment insurance rates on businesses, which would have been you know, further uh, hurt their ability to be profitable. Well, I think it does, uh, but I think in the General Assembly in the last session, they locked in sort of the, the rate schedules for a period of time. But what this does is it relieves the ongoing pressure of having to replenish because not only have we uh, satisfied that uh, borrowing from the federal government, but they still have an expectation that we're going to have a billion dollars in that fund in good times to prepare for bad times. So uh, it, I think it's going to relieve the pressure on uh, businesses across the state uh, yeah. for that. Well, it, it, you know, it's great to hear that it's, you hate to say you're, you're being optimistic when you say it's not as bad as it, we thought it was going to be or it could have been. And, you know, as you know, for, for counties, our uh, revenue stream is delayed. We won't really see right. the income tax uh, if it goes down. We won't see that in our till our distributions of 2022. And we're concerned that uh, assessed value, of course, will probably decrease in um, this calendar year, which will raise the uh, uh, property tax rate for 2022. We'll have a little bit more circuit breaker loss, but at least we have time to prepare for that. So it right. helps us out quite a bit. So. Absolutely. I, I think, uh, you know, we were concerned about the uh, 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 
I mean, we thought it was a good thing for property tax payers to waive the penalties on the spring uh, installment of, of property taxes, but uh, it was good to see the uh, uh, sound collections that uh, the counties uh, had over the course of the year. And so uh, let's hope that we do spring back and, uh, and that, uh, you know, that delay that you were talking about as potential impact is, is mitigated as much as possible. Well, again, um, don't remember your job uh, having to uh, work with the all the state agencies and the General Assembly about legislative priorities. And, you know, we do have limited resources at the state and they're down a little bit now. But what would you say is the governor's top two or three priorities for his budget this year? Well, I think the the one thing that we were uh, uh, proud to announce at the budget committee last week is uh, uh, the continuous continuation of, of funding K through 12. Um, and so I think the uh, over the two year period, it's an increase of three hundred and seventy seven million dollars uh, to K through 12. One of the things that we did when the pandemic first hit is we actually did cut high, uh, higher ed uh, in uh, this fiscal year. So uh, we were able to restore the higher ed uh, cut and also increase that as well. So that's a substantial part of the state budget, you know, well over 50 percent. And then uh, we also do, uh, uh, in addition to the revenue forecast, we do a Medicaid forecast. Mm -hmm. And so we feel very comfortable funding uh, that forecasted uh, need from the general fund as well. And so when you consider those things, uh, you know, we're well close to 70% of the entire budget just right there with, with education and, and Medicaid. Yeah. So uh, those were things that, you know, it's, it's blocking and tackling, if you will. Uh, and uh, it, it's good to be able to restore that and then also um, uh, get to be able to restore the uh, reserves uh, for hopefully some sort of prolonged uh, shock, <laughs> unlike the last one uh, uh, in the future. Well, again, appreciate the partnership this last year through the pandemic. Again, the administration, very open. We had multiple, I say, yeah. phone calls, Zoom meetings, WebExes. Um, and the communication was great. I think it just helped everybody get through it better than it could have been. So well, appreciate uh, again, appreciate the, the cooperation, not only with your organization, but uh, all the county governments uh, in Indiana. And so I, I think it, it worked out well. Yeah. Now we get to the tough questions. Um, we're asking all of our participants this. So who's your favorite Indiana musician or band? Okay, well, I'm probably going to show my age here. Uh, there's a gentleman from Indianapolis uh, named John Hyatt that I've always been uh, a fan of. So, okay. Yeah. And then uh, favorite uh, state fair or county fair food? Oh, well, my, my grandfather used to be on the count, Lake County Fair board when I was a little boy. So uh, that, in coupled with uh, uh, going to my uh, other grandparents, I had never uh, sort of in, in, uh, encountered... Uh, pork tenderloins before. So anything related to pork, right. I think I'll put it just in that category. And then our final question, what's your favorite Indiana sports team, college or pro? Oh, uh, well, uh, I'm, I'm, as far as sports go, I know this isn't the question. I'm probably more of an auto racing fan okay. than anything else, but uh, obviously love the Colts and the Pacers and even uh, the fuel. I uh, played a little hockey in my day and uh, uh, but then I also also have to root for my uh, alma mater, the Little Giants at Wabash College. Oh, so nice. I, I like them all. Good deal. Well, <laughs> well, again, thanks for coming over today and visiting with us. And we look forward to watching the presentations next week with the governor's budget. But again, anything we can do to help out, uh, feel free to contact us. And again, thanks for Very the partnership. Good. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.